mabuhay or in kapampangan luwid kayo. Today's question comes from Marie from the East Coast. Marie asks, Kuya Kirby, totoo ba na may isang Filipinong sultan ang inilibing sa China noong unang panahon? Is it true that a Filipino sultan was buried in ancient China? Yes and no. No because there was no Filipino identity yet. At noong panahong ito, wala pa namang sultanato sa Pilipinas. According to scholars, the Sultanate of Sulu was only established sometime around 1450. But yes, totoo nga na may isang hari ng Sulu ang inilibing sa China noong unang panahon. At ang kanyang pangalan ay Paduka Pahala o minsan tinatawag din siyang Paduka Batara. At nangyari ito noong 1417. So ilang dekada bago pa naging sultanato ang Sulu. Noong 1417, may tatlong hari ng Sulu ang naglayag mula Sulu hanggang China para sa isang diplomatic mission para makipagkilala at makipagkaibigan sa Ming Dynasty ng China na pinamumunuan ng emperador o emperor na si Yongle. At ang tatlong haring ito ay sina Maharaja Kolamanting o kilala rin bilang The Western King. Kasama din si Raduka Prabu o kilala din bilang The Cave King. At siyempre, ang pinakapangyarihan sa kanilang lahat ay si Paduka Pahala o Paduka Batara, kilala rin bilang The Eastern King. At ang diplomatic mission na ito, ang delegasyon na ito ay binubuo ng higit sa tatlong daan at apat na putatlong katao. 343 people were on this diplomatic mission to befriend the most powerful empire on earth at that time. They arrived in August of 1417 and stayed until October of the same year. And the kings of Sulu also brought with them tremendous amount of magnificent treasures and gifts para ibigay sa emperor ng China na si Yongle. And when they arrived in China, they were welcomed with a grand reception and a lot of festivities. Napakaraming pagdiriwang ang inihanda ng Ming Dynasty sa kanilang pagdating. Si Emperor Yongle ng Ming Dynasty China noong panahong ito ang pinakamahapangyarihang tao sa buong mundo. At kinikilala rin ni Emperor Yongle ang tatlong hari ng Sulu bilang kapwa hari. He treated them as fellow kings, not as mere chieftains. In fact, there are only three kingdoms from pre-colonial Philippines whose rulers were recognized by ancient Chinese emperors as fellow kings and not as mere chieftains. And these are the rulers of Sulu. Lu, Butuan, and Lu Song. The three kings of Sulu and their entire delegation were treated with the best hospitality the Ming Dynasty could offer. Sa madaling salita, isa itong napakamatagumpay na diplomatic mission para patatagin ang pagkakaibigan ng Sulu at ng China. And in return, the Chinese emperor showered the kings of Sulu with countless treasures and even provided them with a formidable military escort on their way back. But sadly, on their long journey back to Sulu, Paduka Pahala or Paduka Batara suddenly fell ill and he died in the city of Dajo in the present-day province of Shandong near Beijing. At nang malaman ni Emperor Yongle na bigla na lang namatay ang kanyang kaibigang si Paduka Pahala o Paduka Batara ay labis ang kanyang kalungkutan. In fact, he ordered his entire empire to mourn the death of his dear friend. Iniutos niya na bigyan si Paduka Pahala ng isang imperial funeral fit for a Chinese king. And this imperial funeral is also reflected in the magnificently, elaborately monumental royal tomb that was built for Paduka Pahala. At sa tabi ng libingang ito, ay nagtayo din sila ng isang village para bantayan at alagaan ang libingan ni Paduka Pahala. And this royal tomb and this village still exist to this day. In fact, isa ito sa mga pinakasikat na tourist attraction at pilgrimage destination sa syudad ng Dajo. At ang lugar na ito ay isa sa mga lugar na matagal ko nang gustong puntahan. Hindi lang bilang isang historiador o historian, but also as a descendant of the first Sultan of Sulu. Now back to 1417, after the funeral, after the imperial funeral, Paduka Pahala's first wife and his eldest son returned to Sulu. Naglayag sila pabalik ng Sulu habang naiwan naman ang kanyang ikalawang asawa at dalawa sa kanyang nakababata mga anak na lalaki. His second wife and two younger sons remained in China to observe the traditional three years of mourning. But even after this three years of mourning period, Paduka Pahala's second son, Wen Hali, and his third son, Antulu, along with 18 of their followers, chose to remain in China para alagaan ang libingan ng kanilang pinakamamahal na hari at ama. And they were taken care of and welcomed warmly by the Chinese Muslim community along with a generous pension from the emperor. Wen Hali and Antulu's descendants still live in the same village 
language today. In fact, libo-libo sa kanilang mga descendants na may mga pilidong Wen at An ang nabubuhay ngayon sa buong China. But who was Paduka Pahala? Sino ba talaga si Paduka Batara? Hanggang ngayon ay pinagdidebatihan pa rin ng mga eksperto ang tunay na buhay at tunay na pagkatao ni Paduka Pahala. Prominent scholars like Cesar Majul believe that Paduka Batara was the same person as Raja Sipada the Younger of Sulu. But of course, anim na ang taon na ang nakalipas. Marami sa ating mga kasaysayan ang nabura dahil sa kolonyalismo. Napakarami pa rin ang kailangang i-research. We still have so much to learn and unlearn about our pre-colonial past. Napakarami pa rin natin kailangang aralin at hukayin para makilala natin ang ating mga ninuno. Eh, ano naman ngayon? What's the significance of this event? As mentioned earlier, Sulu is one one of the three known kingdoms, pre-colonial kingdoms in what is now the Philippines, whose rulers were recognized as kings, as fellow kings, by the ancient Chinese emperors. And these are the kingdoms of Sulu, Butuan, and Luzon. Pre-colonial kingdoms whose tributes were not seen as signs of submission and surrender, but instead, they were testaments of their friendship and alliance. Sa madaling salita, ang tatlong kahari ang ito, ang Sulu, Butuan, at Luzon, ay mga kaharian na kinikilala ng mga sinaunang emperor ng China bilang mga kaibigan at hindi nasasakupan. And this historic event was also one of the earliest known diplomatic missions between China and the Philippines. But it is not the earliest. Hindi rin ito ang pinakaunang diplomatic mission mula sa kapuluan ng Pilipinas patungong China. Because that would actually be the one from Butuan hundreds of years bago pa pinanganak si Paduka Pahala. But this 1417 mission is in fact the earliest known diplomatic mission in which sovereign kings from the islands of the Philippines went on the mission on a diplomatic mission themselves. Ito ang pinakauna at pinakamatandang na italang state visit ng isang leader o pinuno o hari mula Pilipinas, mula sa ating kapuluan, patungong ibang bansa. And this historic event also indicates ancient China's utmost respect to our ancestors. Makikita natin sa makasaysayang pagkakasaysayang kaibigang ito ang labis na pagmamahal, pagkilala at pagrespeto ng mga sinaunang Chino sa ating mga ninuno. But what do you think? Ano sa tingin ninyo ang mahalagang matutunan sa napakamakasaysayang pagkakaibigang ito? Let me know in the comments below. And that is it for me today. If you like this video and learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please be my patron or get a copy of my book. Dakalpung salamat. See you next time. We're in Tagalog, Tagit, and in Kapampangan, Miki Ticks.